I have to look at it. Hello, everybody. This is Amber Karen, Communications Director for Reads Across America. Um, excited to do this webinar in a little bit different format today. We're actually going to be going through this, uh, our team, and that way we're going to send it to you all to watch at your leisure and go through the slides and reach out if you have any questions. So um, there's a lot of great things happening, obviously, uh, with Reads Across America, and it's a busy time of year heading into September. So we want to make sure that people have a take a minute um, and think about public relations and reaching out in their community. So first and foremost, if you don't know me, I'm Amber. I'm based here in Maine um, and I'm the communications director for Reads Across America. I think many of you should know and hopefully have had some interaction with Samantha Clark. And Samantha is also based in Maine and has been with Reads Across America for how long now, Samantha? Uh, since 2017. And held many different roles, including customer service. Uh, uh, right more roles than years that I've been here probably <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um and Samantha is our uh our local uh guru when it comes to all things social media for locations and groups so if you're having questions or concerns about social media she is the best person to reach out to and I'm also really excited to introduce Rachel Wilson Rachel is our new PR coordinator, um, and I'm sure only a few of you at this point have met Rachel, but I'm looking forward to you all reaching out to her and getting to know her. She is actually on the West Coast, and Rachel, maybe give a little bit about yourself to, to everyone. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Wilson. I am the public relations uh, specialist for Reads Across America now. Very excited to be here. Uh, I am a veteran as well as um, a business student. I've, I've had probably 10 years in the public relations and press industry. Uh, I'm looking forward to helping you guys with all things press and public relations. If you have questions about local media, uh, interviews, anything like that, please reach out. Um, I'd love to connect with you on that. Awesome, thank you so much, Rachel. And we're gonna jump right into it, so maybe. Okay. First and foremost, so Reads Across America, as we all know, uh, is a year-round mission. Um, Reads Across America Day is a national event, and so many of us are working very hard towards that day. However, the mission is year-round, and there is activity happening in our communities all throughout the year. Our mission to remember the fallen, honor those who serve, and teach ne the next generation the value of freedom is inherent in everything that this organization offers through our various free programs. Um, and it's really something that's taking a hold of communities across the country. Um, and it's just something to remember that it doesn't have to be leading up to Wreath Day that you're promoting your involvement in Reese Calls America. And that's where we're going to really get into things this in this presentation. And it's always important to say this out loud. Um, we are not selling wreaths. We are selling wreath sponsorships and a sponsorship supports the placement of a live balsam veterans wreath on the headstone of an American hero. And it supports the year round mission to remember, honor and teach of Reads Across America and all the programs that come with that. So keeping that in mind, whenever reaching out to the media or, or sharing what you're doing, it's critical that people realize that there is a difference uh, in what we're doing. And, and of course, a lot of people have questions around what we do for living veterans. And I hope that if you don't know the answer to that and don't know what we're doing for living veterans, please reach out because there are so many things that we're doing. And we have so many groups and VSOs that we're working with that really can help better articulate all the ways that we're helping in those in these communities across the country. So really, when we talk about public relations, it's all about engaging with your community. Each of you as a volunteer is working so hard to share what your vision is, right, for, for this program. But really, it's about helping people understand why and how they can get involved. And there's many different ways to do that. Um, again, back to the year-round mission, there are things happening from the mobile education exhibit to um, all of the different groups that are participating and raising funds for their own programs um, to our teach curriculum that's free and uh, we can download those programs, uh, those lesson plans on our website. Those are all things that can be shared throughout the year. And there's many tools to do that. Um, the biggest probably being is social media. And I know for a lot of folks, social media might seem intimidating. Um, 
We certainly understand that. I, I understand that. <laughs> um, I defer to Samantha on a lot of things that I'm just like, I, I don't know. Um, and it's okay. We're here to help you. And we encourage you to find and work with other people in your community who might be interested in social media. Maybe there's people who want to help in some way, but don't know what value they could bring but they could help you with managing some social media uh, tools. And that would be a great thing for local youth to get involved in your program. But we have, we offer lots of options um, from our own pages that can be shared as well as tools on our, on the volunteer resource uh, page of the website to help you be successful on social media. And I, re I really encourage you when we, when we think about social media to not just use it for asking for funds we want to be offering content that's relevant to the mission all throughout the year so that mm -hmm. when the time comes to ask, actually ask for help or something in return, you've given all of these great things throughout the year and maybe shared things that are happening in your community with other VSOs or other organizations who are doing good work in your community so that when it's your turn to then ask for help, others are going to be more willing to do that. So that's something to keep in mind. And, and we'll talk a little bit, Samantha, we'll talk a little bit more about social media. Um, and then also establishing relationships with the local media outlets. Um, and Rachel will talk a little bit more about this in a, in a little bit. But, you know, every community has local media, no matter the size, even the smallest of communities has probably some local paper or I don't know, pamphlet or some free publication that's available to the community. Um, and it's important that you make sure that you know what those outlets are. What is What are people in your community turning to for their information, right? That's local. Obviously, we all know about national media and, you know, Reads Across America at the highest level is communicating with and reaching out to national media. But really, people care about what's happening in their hometowns. They care about uh, what's happening in their backyard. And so by establishing relationships with your local media, they're going to be that much more excited to share what you have going on when you have something of importance to share. So it's important to establish yourself and understand who those people are. And again, um, we I understand that that could be intimidating to some people, but we have ways of helping you and, and certainly um, encourage you to, again, find volunteers who might be more well-versed in that or more comfortable in that type of outreach, and they can help out with that. And then also more, I think this is really important when you're talking about public relations is getting to know other community programs. If you're working with other nonprofits in your area, those folks are all connected to the to the day-to-day -day activity that's happening in your community. And if they're sharing what you're doing and you're sharing what they're doing, you're all helping each other. So I would always encourage and remind people not to think of other events and other activities as competition. If it's If it's helping your community, and it's supporting our military families and veterans, then by all means, help each other. So get go to those other events, share what they're doing, invite them to your events, um, make sure that they know what's happening so they can get the word out to their supporters. And by doing that, you have this grassroots, you know, network of people who are helping each other. So, and I can tell you right now, as someone who's been with Raise Across America for 16 years, we have grown leaps and bounds because of the grassroots efforts of our volunteers in communities all across this country. So it's really important. So I'm actually going to ask uh, Rachel to share a little bit about sharing the mission with local media. All right, everyone. So when you think of being interviewed on the in the media, you think of being on TV, radio, it's a little daunting. You get a little nervous and that's understandable. That's for anybody, for me, for Amber, you know, you get those little jitters. Um, but it's really a lot more simple than people uh, imagine it is. Um, you want to keep the media up to date. There's really, you know, um, a big market for hometown stories and they want to hear your story. They want to hear why. They want to um, really get into why WAA does what they do. And so you want to give that to them. You want to be able to share the mission. You want to be able to let them know, hey, I have a, you know, uh, 
barbecue plate dinner coming up with the VFW. I have, uh, you know, a wreath laying ceremony. We are going to, you know, whatever, whatever your uh, directive in the mission, I, I guess I would say, is you want to keep them in the loop. Um, and you can do that through um, finding news, like it says, find news that's relevant. So you want to make sure that you're finding things like Veterans Day, Military Appreciation Month, things like those that would be relevant to what you're doing in your community. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna pitch it. You're going, what we call pitch, <laughs> you're going to pitch the story. You're going to email your media outlet. Uh, you're going to you know, let them know, hey, here are the details. Um, and we also have, if you're worried about what do I type? What do I put? How do I do all of that? Well, WAA has you covered. Um, we have press templates, press release templates, announcement templates, and you have uh, me at your disposal. So there's no need to be nervous. The media wants to hear from you and we want to share the mission. Yeah, I think that's an important part. And I actually, so um, I'm gonna move on to the next slide and kind of jump on what Rachel just said. You know, it's important to keep in mind that the media has a job to do. They, they are they are required <laughs> they are required to share what's happening in your community that's their job literally and so they're looking for stories right they want to be able to share stories about what's happening in communities um it's just it's part of why they all became journalists they want to do that it's important so making sure that you're providing good quality information and to Rachel's point, when you go on the volunteer resource page of our website, we have tons of template material. So we try to try, you know, keep the guesswork out of what, well, what do I have to actually send? So the template just kind of has, um, you know, it has the format, the formality of maybe like a press release, or I think we have, you know, we have media advisories on there too, but you fill in the who, what, where, when, and why, and then take that and utilize that to reach out to your local media. And that makes it very easy for them to then receive the information, right? And understand, well, here's what's happening, when it's happening, am I invited to go? And then they might follow up with some questions and that's okay. Um, and an additional note, it's always good to um, give time. <laughs> this is always a tricky thing. Um, the more time you give media, the more they'll appreciate that. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and, you know, there's always going to be breaking urgent news. Nothing that we're doing is going to be breaking urgent news. It's going to be those feature stories that you want to give them time to plan for, right? If you let someone know a month ahead of a time about an event, they can put it on their calendar and yeah, things might happen between a now and then. So maybe a week or two out, you call them or you send an email and just send a reminder, hey, just don't, forget about this, that I sent this information to you. Um, and they'll appreciate that. They really will, because, you know, some of them be, might be like, yep, that's on our calendar. We're planning on going. And others might be like, you know what? Thanks. Forgot. I lost track of that. Appreciate it. You know, you know, it's not going to guarantee. And I do want to say that to you all, we cannot guarantee that if you pitch media, they are going to come. Um, the nature of the way the media works is that there's competing priorities. Um, and so unfortunately, you know, there's no way to guarantee that even if they say they're going to come, they're going to show up. That being said, by establishing those relationships locally, they're more likely to at least communicate with you and let you under and set expectations, right? So those are important things to keep in mind when dealing with your local media. Um, when we talk about the who, what, where, when, why, I actually think, I mean, personally, the why is really the story, right? And, you know, Rachel and I have talked about this because we do, you know, over the years, we've both done a lot of media training mm -hmm. and from volunteers to executives, the why still is the most important piece, right? Um, when you're being interviewed or you're talking to a member of the press or even a member of the community, right? You have to keep in mind, why is this important to you? And if it's important to you, it, why would it then be important to your community? And that means telling your story. Like, what does the mission mean to you? Um, it makes it a more personal thing. And you're not then trying to remember statistics or, 
data points, you know, I would never encourage anyone doing an interview to try and rattle off stats for Reads Across America. We're not expecting you to do that. I would rather you not. <laughs> <laughs> because if you, if you do that, you might get it wrong. And that's, okay. I mean, it's okay, but I'd rather not share that information unless, I mean, there are people at the highest level who can do that. So don't worry about that. You just need to share why as a volunteer, does this matter? Why should your community care? And if you can include that, and every time you reach out to your community, whether it be through media, through social media, through, you know, communication of to volunteers, that's going to come through and you're going to get other people interested. So just always keeping that at the forefront of whatever you're doing. And honestly, um, over the years, you know, to Rachel's earlier point, you know, doing interviews is not necessarily something that everyone feels comfortable with. You know, even I get nervous doing interviews sometimes. And it's at the end of the day, you know, why I'm always okay is because I come back to why am I doing this? And I, and the mission and what it means to me. And if you can do that, it's easy. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay. And then Rachel, if you want to talk a little bit about focusing on the media, and this is some of your points from before, but just kind of reiterating some of this. Um, yeah. So top question, when should you focus on contact local media? Well, I think what that uh, has to do with the WAA is looking back at what Amber said um, about making sure, you know, we have the TEACH program, we have mobile education, um, you have local efforts, and those are throughout the year. Those aren't just um, in December around replaying time. So you want to go like, like we were saying, you want to contact the media when you have these things. You want to keep them in the loop. Um, the easiest way to do that, I know I can be forgetful, I don't know about you guys, but to mark your calendar. Mark your calendar for not just wreath laying day, but Veterans Day, Memorial Day, you know, Soldier Appreciation Day. Those kind of dates are going to be important for you. And the reason they're important for you is because they're important to the news and they help you tie in um, and kind of find that niche, find that in, in the news with what your mission is and uh, what events you have coming up. So you definitely want to look for those uh, relevant opportunities and those, like we were saying, those stories are your why. We don't want to get into politics. We don't want to get into all of the, the nitty gritty negative details. People want to hear, why are you inspired? Why are you inspired to work with WAA? What brought you here? Um, so definitely share that with them. Um, when it says pass along information, if you do something great, let them know, toot your own horn, beep, beep, like let the media know, let us know. We would love to share it on our media. We have social media, we have Reads Across America Radio, which will be a slide coming up and you'll learn all about, but we want uh, to support you in that and your story and your achievements matter. So definitely bring those up, keep them all year round. You know, if you raise a hundred dollars uh, in May, let them know, you know, let them know how many wreaths, you know, you have, uh, it, let them know when your events are going to be, because they're happy to hear it. And it definitely helps um, bring interest to the program. Yeah, no, and that's great. And, and honestly, like milestone things too, like, you know, maybe like a mid-year July, like in, we're halfway through the year and this is where we are on wreath count. Here's how many veterans are buried in our local cemetery. Um, that could be a great story as kind of just a mid-year point for people to be thinking about. So there's lots of those things. And honestly, the media works on calendar cycles too. Uh, they have editorial calendars, same as, you know, we as an organization have an editorial calendar where we look at things that are happening um, that are relevant, whether it's, you know, the birthday, Coast Guard's, you know, birthday or whatever that might be, right? There's those relevant dates and, and you can do some quick research and find that out. We also... Um, and from a social media standpoint, uh, Samantha also does like an editorial messaging guide every month that kind of highlights days like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's a good way. I always look at that <laughs> to see what we have coming up that might be relevant to the news, right? Um, 
right? So it's just one of those things. It's when you think about that, um, there's all those things while you're watching the media. If someone says it's, you know, it's National Pancake Day and today we're at IHOP, you know, that's somebody pitched that just so we're clear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Somebody pitched that story to the news and said, hey, did you know it's National Pancake Day? You should come to IHOP. So just think about those things like that's relevant for us too. obviously not the pancakes, but maybe if you're having a pancake breakfast, I don't know. Um, things to think about. So I know it sounds silly, but there's a lot of that type of stuff happening right in the media that you can jump on and kind of make make way with. So. Um, and also, you know, getting the word out. So this is some of this is going to be repetitive, but it doesn't hurt to say it over and over, you know, on our volunteer resources uh, page of our website, we also have, um, excuse me, also the media resources page of our website, we have downloadable public service announcements that are both for TV and radio. Those are things that are just generic and talk about the mission and talk about, you know, National Race Across America Day. You can download those and share those with your local media. Um, for them to be airing. Uh, there's no cost associated with a public service announcement. Again, back to the media's requirements as, as an entity, they are required to do public service announcements. So things like that are available for your use. If you're not sure what to do with that or how to submit something like that, Rachel can help with that. I can help with that. So just reach out and we can help give some directive on how best to utilize something like that. And then obviously, uh, sharing regular content and I'll let Sam, cause we actually have a lot <laughs> of content for social media available, right? Tons. Um, and she does a monthly, what do you, so Sam, you do the messaging guy, share, where is that available? So it's on the volunteer resource page and I share it in the groups every month. And I think Megan sends it in an email. Yeah. So it goes, I think, yeah. So the groups are the private groups on Facebook. If you are on Facebook, we encourage you to, uh, to join the private location coordinator or sponsorship group, private group on Facebook. A lot of great content shared there. Sam answers a ton of questions, probably like every day she answers questions in there. Um, also Not just good content, good ideas for everybody else. It's a great place to source fundraising ideas. Agree. Agree. And uh, the social media messaging guide includes approved brand approved graphics for that have our branding and that can be utilized and on your own channels. Um, you know, keeping in mind, though, that sending just a graphic out on social media, but not including, you know, you need to include the link to your page. So whenever you share a graphic, whether you do it in the comments or or the post, which, which would you prefer? Which do you think is better, Sam? In your post. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> it's, in good, it's good to include your direct link. So if people want to contact you or need more information about volunteering or sponsoring, they know exactly where to go. So yes. if you're using the graphics, remember to have some kind of call to action, like click here or contact me or something like that, that in encourages um, people to engage in some way. Um, mm -hmm. But again, and, and there are a lot of channels of social, there's social media channels, there's a lot of channels. These are the channels that Reads Across America has. And to Rachel's earlier point, you know, we have these tools. These are our owned channels. So we we have our official Facebook page. We have an official YouTube channel. We have an official LinkedIn and Instagram, Twitter, and now TikTok account. We have Reads Across America Radio. We have our website that has our newsroom blog. Those are all channels that we own and as ambassadors for Reads Across America and volunteers, you can share any of that content. Mm -hmm. So you, if you never wanted to create any of your own content and just wanted to share ours, awesome. Mm -hmm. You can just find a way to, in your post, to Sam's point, point, localize it to your page so people know how to get in touch with you, right? So if you share something from our official Facebook page on your Facebook page, make sure that they know how to contact you and how to sign up to volunteer or to sponsor a wreath so that people know where to get more information about your event. And I feel like we said all that, but keep going, Sam. <laughs> Jump right into the slide. Yeah. Um, so for social media, if you don't have a Facebook page already for your group or location, I would highly suggest starting one. It's going to be the quickest and the easiest way 
to get information about your group and location and your event and everything you're doing out to your community. You can post as frequently as you'd like, but always keep that page active. Yeah. If you shared only in December, it's going to be a dead page most of the year. And because of Facebook's algorithm, it might not show up in your followers pages. Um, like Amber said, we can we provide you with all of the resources you need to get started and to keep your page fresh and active. And I'm always here and happy to help create new content, uh, customized content, um, you know, just to make it more local about your area, your heroes, your your community. So, yeah. I would say it is important to know. So Sam is um, Sam is on a lot of a lot of pages. <laughs> She's admin on a lot of pages. She does mm -hmm. monitor pages, and it's important to just keep in mind that you know we there is a social media policy that is signed by all locations and groups when you register to be a Reads Across America volunteer, uh, a registered uh, core member of the team. Um, the biggest thing on that is that you know as a as a five hundred one c three we cannot be political. So especially, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, but it's important that if you're using your Rees Across America page, you keep politics out of it and you try and keep it very positive. Even if, you know, even if the, you think it's a positive post about politics, sometimes that can open the door to conversation in your comments. That is just not necessary. Um, and it doesn't need to, to happen. So keeping it focused on, you know, veterans or families in your community, we've seen, um, and if you're not sure what a good Facebook page looks like, you can go on Facebook and look up WAA and you'll start seeing tons of pages and you'll right away see the ones that have good, strong following and a lot of interaction. And you'll see that they're the ones that are sharing regular content, you know, highlighting veterans in their community, highlighting positive events in their community. You know, those are the pages that are doing really well and they're keeping them up to date, right? They're making sure that their wreath day events are clearly outlined in their in their site so that if someone goes to that page they're getting the correct information that's important um you know if you haven't done that yet this year please check your facebook page would we say that sam because i feel like that's always something make sure yeah. it's up to date with this year's date and this year's information for your event right if you're placing reads after the ceremony Make sure that's clear on your on your Facebook page, right? If there is parking requirements or restrictions that people need to know about for attending your your event, please make sure that's clearly outlined. And if you don't know how to do that, you should call Sam and she will help you. <laughs> but it's a great way because you'd be surprised how many people will go to Facebook first to yep. look for information about an event. Um, versus your sponsorship group page. Um, they just, they I think it's just human nature. Oh, well, it must be on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So make sure, even if your page isn't super active, make sure it's up to date. That would be great. Um, okay, Reads Across America Radio. So I'm hoping anyone watching uh, this knows about Reads Across America Radio. This is our 24 seven internet radio station. You can hear us live anytime um, at readsacrossamerica.org slash radio, or you can download the free iHeart, Odyssey, or TuneIn apps on uh, your iPhone or your Android phone um, and listen free anytime. I utilize it on my, I, uh, I have the iHeart app on my phone, and uh, all you have to do is look up Wreaths. We are the only <laughs> wreath content radio station um, available in there. Um, it's really grown into a fantastic station. We have over 60 um, aggregate podcasts from shows across the country that are hosted by veterans about veterans and military families um, and really are just providing really good stories and, and content that's useful for, for anyone. Um, additionally, there's plenty of opportunities to tell the audience what you have going on. Think about that. This is like the easiest free public public uh, excuse me publicity you can get you all you have to say is hey I'm a location coordinator and I'm um, heading up this location and I love to tell everyone that we have some groups fundraising and doing some great work and here's I just want to tell everyone about what we have going on let us know read uh, <laughs> uh, oh, oh, Amber to that if you look in one of the earlier slides I think it might have oh, yeah. been 
um, social media, there is a, uh, on the right hand side, there is a little paragraph and it says, want to connect with us, want to share your story, click here, go ahead and click that button, fill the form um, so that you can, you know, be a guest on, on internet radio. I mean, that's amazing. And um, yeah, so it's also on uh, the webpage. Uh, when you go to Roots Across America Radio, uh, you can find that button there. You fill out the form and uh, that way you can share. Yep. That form's a great way to do it. You can also email the team at waaradio at readsacrossamerica.org. Either way, they will be excited to talk to you. It's going to be an easy, fun interview. Um, you can do it live or you could do it pre-taped. Um, but it's a great way to get the word out um, and to let people know to tune in, right? Um, it's just a it's a great way to to share what you have going on. And and honestly, it's really great quality radio. We're heading, we're at a lot of events all the time, um, talking to some really awesome people about service and success. So please, um, if you haven't tuned in um, or you're not sure how to download the apps, let us know. We'd be happy to walk you through it. It's pretty, it's pretty easy and it's all free. Um, so we've kind of alluded to this um, throughout this presentation, but I just really want to reiterate um, we are in an election year this year, um, and that can be challenging in the world of social media, um, as I'm sure everyone knows, no matter what side of the aisle you're on. Um, it is difficult sometimes to not get involved in conversation around politics. However, as a 501c3 organization, Reads Across America cannot and will not engage in politics. We could lose our status as a 501c3 if C3, excuse me, if we engage in politics. So as brand ambassadors for Reads Across America, it is really important that we all refrain from engaging in political conversations when representing Reads Across America publicly. So that means on social media, that means during events. Um, so, you know, it's one thing for you personally, obviously, whatever you do on a personal level, that's totally up to you. Um, but if you're on a branded page, we remind you to just keep um, those personal feelings personal <laughs> um, and keep the branded pages focused on our mission. Um, same thing with events. Um, it's, you know, we know some folks do have elected officials that are participate in actual ceremonies. And that is one thing. The other thing, though, is if there is someone who is running for re-election or election in general and uh, is campaigning, we advise against that because under no circumstances should Reads Across America be used for any kind of campaign stump, I guess is the one way to say it. Um, so just keeping that in mind, it's just a friendly reminder for everybody. Um, and that we know that that can be challenging. But if um, you do have any issues on your pages um, with people engaging in politics, please let us know. And we can certainly assist there as needed. So this is just uh, rem reminding you all of how to contact all of us. And we will, um, so this video uh, is going to be made available as will the slides. Um, but certainly if you're not sure how to get a hold of any of us, you can certainly reach out to your liaison team. And then also we encourage you to go to the veteran, excuse me, the volunteer resource page on the website. So when you go to readsacrossamerica.org, there is a resources tab in the main menu. Go to volunteer resources. There you will find so many amazing tools. I mean, the it is so done, cool. <laughs> yeah, they've done a really great job. Uh, I can't say enough about the liaison team. Um, and then there's, you know, there's an intro to media relations. If you really want to, I mean, it gets a little more in depth about working with the media. If you're really curious, um, it has tons of templates, like we mentioned. These are just a sampling of them that you can customize for your events. And if you have something going on that maybe isn't in there, let us know. We can probably whip together a template for you pretty quick um, and help you out. So just let us know if there's something that you don't feel fits what you're doing um, and you need a little help. So just keep that in mind when you're going through that. But if you haven't gone through that page, please can't encourage you enough to do so. It's very helpful. Um, and I feel like the folks that are utilizing those tools are usually the more successful folks because they're um, they have the resources that they need. And then most importantly, and I know we say this all the time, but it cannot be said enough, please contact your regional liaison if you have any questions or concerns. If you're not sure how to reach us or if you're not sure what to do, they are a great first step. So always start with them 
and they will direct you to the right person, the right tool, the right resource. They want you to be successful. We want you to be successful. And so don't hesitate to reach out. Um, if you're not sure who your regional liaison is, please take a look at this and contact them. Um, and I'm sure they'd be very happy to speak with you. So, um, but that keeping that in mind, they're always a great first step. And that's it folks. I hope you appreciate um, the time and uh, thought here, but we really more importantly appreciate your hard work and your dedication. Um, you guys are doing great things and we want you to tell everybody. That's the point here. We want you to tell everyone all the awesome things that you're doing because you deserve for people to know and to get the community involved. So um, thank you all very much for your time and your attention and most importantly for your commitment to the mission. So have a great day.